In this video, I'm going to go over a, a very popular question that I've been getting recently uh, about the algo, that why does the algo prefer taking call spreads over put spreads? Some people are even thinking that it doesn't even take any put spreads. So the best way to do that is by explaining to you the thesis behind it and then show you real life back tests where the data can support my thesis and show you why, why do put spreads not at work as well as call spreads and why did I end up tightening the rules for put spreads as compared to call spreads. Now, before I proceed, I have some exciting updates for you. So as you know, the algo is live. It's not taking any trades yet because the conditions are not right. But I just want to show you a quick preview of how things are looking. As you know, I've modeled the algorithm based on exactly how I run the group and how I approach the markets. So every morning you will see a morning announcement from Maya telling you what it is thinking about the markets. Maya will give you an assessment of what it thinks the markets are doing and what its plan is for that day. This is back from uh, 8th November. So it says, here is the market outlook for today. General market trend bullish, but it does say says market pullback detected. Algo will focus on closing losers. New trades will not be opened until markets start recovering. So that's what it does when it detects a pullback, it stops trading and it just focuses on managing its existing trades. Also, um, look at the icon here. It shows that Maya has gone into like a sleep mode. So it's not doing anything. And then look at the announcement below that, which is from today, where it says, here's the market outlook for today. It's giving you some conditions. It doesn't think markets are in a pullback, although SPY is trending down. It doesn't think it's a pullback yet. So the icon is, you know, with its arms wide open, that means it is going to look for trades. In these conditions, it looks for trades. The thing is, if the trade criteria is not met, it will still not find any trades. It's not like it's gonna go indiscriminately opening trades just because market conditions are bullish. It will still, it has a set of criteria which it goes through. And if it doesn't find any trades, it just doesn't do anything. Today, I added this uh, new feature where it's gonna tell you what are the market moving macroeconomic events that are scheduled for the next seven days until Friday. So in this case, it's telling you to, today's Thursday. So it's telling you that PPI is coming out this morning, which it did. And then we have Fed uh, Powell's speech today. Uh, that's one thing. And then tomorrow we have retail sales data. And then it will also tell you if there are any major market moving events lined up for this week. So if there are 43 names which I picked out from, from my watch list of almost 200 stocks and it only checks for those earnings events and then it will it will report those events to you on almost on a daily basis. So this is how the announcements will look like. Of course, the real fun begins when it starts taking trades, which hasn't happened yet. But if you look at any of the back tests, you will see that, for example, this is 2020. You will see that um, the stock is on the left column, stock symbol long strike, short strike, and then trade type. Now look at the trade type, call spread, and you will see that the algorithm keeps taking call spreads and hardly ever takes any put spreads. There is this one period where it took some put spreads, but it's mostly call spreads. So to answer this question, let me um, take you back in time when I was developing this algorithm. Uh, if you remember, my original algorithm, like I was done with my coding, basic coding in maybe two months. And then all the back tests were looking really promising. So I was getting like between 65 to 70% win rate in every year. But then I hit a snag when I started testing 2022. And that year became such a huge problem for me because my win rate went down to 7%. And no matter how much I tweaked my code and um, made things more bulletproof, it never went, went above 
at that point i was like i can't go live with this algorithm because if any year comes along where my win rate drops below 35% that means i'll start losing money and i don't want that so my goal was to keep my win rate above 50% 35% is break even but just to make sure you know in real life doesn't always uh, match with your back tests so to give myself enough buffer i was like even if i get 50% win rate in bad years i am good i can go live with this so that was a little history behind it now at that point my algorithm was behaving was just taking call spreads when it thought markets were going up and taking put spreads when markets were going down even then the put spreads were performing really bad and i tried a lot of things to make it work for example i played around with um, different dt's ex different expirations I, i tried that i tried um using inverse etfs instead of regular etfs i tried that and i could never get above 15% win rate so that was a big disappointment for me and then when i started doing was i started tightening the rules that i have for opening bear put spreads while keeping rules relaxed for call spreads so once i started doing that everything changed for me and i do have a theory in my mind why that happened why my win rate went up so much by removing put spreads so number one this is a trend following algorithm remember in my regular trading in the book that i have written i have explained a mean reversion trading method and mean reversion is basically when a stock is overstretched to the upside or downside you take an opposite trade so for mean reversion put spreads work fine i would even say that call spreads still have a better win rate then put spreads but put spreads still do perfectly fine there is no problem with put spreads but with the trend following algorithm things are different because the if you remember i keep quoting this bulls take the stairs up bears take the elevator down and what that means is when markets go up they go up in a slow controlled fashion with pullbacks in between which gives you buy the dip opportunities when markets fall it happens all of a sudden it happens so quick that usually you don't have any time to react or capitalize on that quick movement and then once you um uh, let's say you do notice that markets have fallen down and you start taking put spreads it could be too late and market would just re- could reverse in the next 10 days again causing all your put spreads to become losers so that is the basic theory behind why put spreads don't work so well because when markets fall it always happens on a knee jerk reaction and many times knee jerk reactions die off and markets get bought up so having said that that's my theory behind it but then again you have a theory and then if you are able to test it that's a perfect combination so what i've done for you is i've compared years 2020 to 2024 and there are two sets of back tests one is the regular set of back tests where uh, the version of the algo which is live which is more conservative when looking for put spreads more stricter criteria and the other version is the criteria is the same for call and puts so the first year i have for you is uh 2020 and by the way all these back tests are linked in the description below so you can uh take your time and go through them so 2020 year of the covid crash so if you look at the first set uh notice that uh, the su- below the summary i have added another section where it tells you how many call spread were winners how many were losers similarly for put spread winners and put spread losers 2020 with a mixture of bear puts and bull calls win rate 67% which is a good win rate because any win rate 60% or above if you have that win rate you will make uh, you you can make sizable returns in a year 
So it's pretty good win rate. Um, so 91,000 dollars in wi winners, 23,000 in losers. Um, but look at the section below. The put spread that it took, 40 of them were losers and only nine were winners. Whereas the call spreads, 186 were winners versus 54 losers. Now let's switch to the second section where we have the conservative algo, which means for put spreads, it has a very strict criteria. Only then it takes put spreads. It does take put spreads only under certain conditions. So with that version, look, it only took nine put spreads that year versus 49. And all nine were losers, no winners. But because the call spread were winners, the win rate went from 67% to 74% in that year. Now let's switch to 2021. Um, so you can see that uh, with the combination of bear puts and bull calls, there are 49 put spread losers and only 17 winners. And the win rate dropped to 63.7%, again, which is a good win rate. But now if you compare that to uh, the one, the conservative algo, the win rate is 70. 1.8%. So that's a huge difference. Okay, so the next year is 2022. That's the only year which uh, the bear, bear puts performed uh, good. So let's start with the relaxed version of the algo. And you can see that there are uh, 38 put spread winners and only four put spread losers. Win rate is 60%. Okay, that's great. If you look at the conservative algo, it has 37 put spread winners and four losers. So it did take put spreads in a bear market. So that, that's what I was telling you that uh, the algo is not designed to only take call spreads. It does take put spreads, but the conditions are very strict for it to take those uh, put spreads. So in a bear market, the performance is pretty much identical. If you look at the win rates, it's 60% versus 59.93%, which is basically 60%. So it's identical. So this is the only year where the bear put spreads performed well, and then the conservative algo actually performed exactly the same as the relaxed algo. So why would I focus on put spreads when I can clearly see in my back tests that if I prefer bull call spreads and I make the rules for opening bear put spreads stricter, I always get good results. So I'll stop here at 2022 because all the results are um, in the description below. You can go through them. But I hope it um, answers your question. I've been getting a lot of questions about this and helps you understand the thought process behind it and also the data behind it.